So for the first one, we should just be getting this back, which is pi. Likewise, this and that cancel, we just get pi as well, right? No. In fact, for the second one, we actually do not have an answer. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So on the other day, I made a video for my pre-calculus students on this question, and I told them that the inverse cosine of pi is undefined. Therefore, the whole thing here has no answer. Pi is bigger than 1, which is outside of this interval. So in fact, this right here doesn't even make sense in the first place. But of course you know, there's always that student who wants to change the teacher all the time, right? Of course, he enters this on Wolfram Alpha. Have a look. I, I don't know what to say. Sometimes Wolfram Alpha is just way too powerful. And you can imagine that the student is really, really happy because he is right and I was wrong. But let me tell you, do you know how in the world the Wolfram Alpha end up with pi for this? the complex world so if you really want to go there i will take you there but just don't regret so have a look right here sorry just had to redeem myself but anyway we are going to work this inside out and in order for this to make sense we will actually have to talk about the complex definition of cosine first thanks to the oldest formula we have e to the i z being equal to cosine z plus i sine z and then next, we are going to plug in negative z into all the z's. So we get e to the i times negative z. And when we put this inside of cosine, because cosine is even, even in the complex world, so we can still just get cosine z. And when we plug in negative z into sine, sine is odd, even in the complex world. So we can put a negative on the outside here, and we have minus i sine z. Look at these two equations, we are going to add them up because this way, this and that cancel and we'll just get 2 cosine z being equal to the sum of that. And then we can just divide both sides by 2. So ladies and gentlemen, cosine z is just equal to this plus that which is e to the i z plus e to the negative i z all over 2. And that is the complex definition of cosine. Well, remember we are doing this inside out. So we shall come up with a complex definition for the inverse cosine. Well, this is how we can do it. We are going to call this to be some other complex number. Let's just say this is equal to w. And then the goal is, we are going to take the <laughs> inverse cosine on both sides, right? But I'm not going to look at this and that. Rather, I'm going to look at this and that. And then we are going to solve for the z right here. That's the goal. So from here, let's multiply 2 on both sides. And we will get e to the i z plus e to the negative i z is equal to 2w. Here we have e to the negative i z. Let's multiply everybody by e to the plus the i z. This times that is just e to the i z square and this times that is just equal to 1 because you add the exponents it's just e to the zeros power so we will just put down a plus 1 right here this times that is 2 w e to the i z on the right hand side let's move it to the left hand side and we will get minus 2 w e to the i z and of course this will be equal to 0 the reason I put it down this way is because now we have a quadratic equation in terms of e to the i z so we can use the quadratic formula and that will give us e to the i z being equal to negative b which is this right here so we have negative 2 w and then do the plus or minus as usual here's a square root b square so we have negative 2 w and square and then minus 4 times 1 and 1 which is just minus 4 and then all over 2 times 1 okay cool now check this out this is negative 2 squared which is 4 and likewise we also have a 4 so we can factor that out square root of 4 is 2 and then we have a 2 right here as well and then likewise we have a 2 so in fact we can cancel this cancel this cancel this and cancel that all together so in fact we just get e to the ic is equal to the rest and then i will just take the natural log on both sides so we get 
i z equals natural log of positive w and then plus or minus square root of remember this is cancelled it already and then we have just w square minus one and then this is also cancelled already so that's what we have of course we can just divide both sides by i to isolate the z but let me tell you let's multiply everybody by negative i because i times i is negative one and multiply by negative this times that will give us z is equal to and you see cosine z is equal to w so we can just take the inverse cosine on both sides that means z is equal to inverse cosine of w and that's exactly what we want and now we have expression right here for that which is just this times that wow you know what's a bigger wow in fact we have infinitely many solutions for this because z is like the angle so we can always just go ahead and add 2 n pi to produce infinitely many solutions but i'm not going to go there i'm just going to work with one answer for the inverse cosine pi anyway this is what we have now to calculate this all we have to do is put a pi in here here and there and i'm just going to work out one solution all right and again i just want to work with one answer so let me just use the plus version here and we have the square root and we have pi square minus one and that's all i want it's enough seriously because you see we still have to do cosine of the <laughs> the, the expression that we get earlier right so here we go cosine of inverse cosine of pi of course this becomes cosine of this expression how do we calculate this well this is a complex number inside of cosine so we will have to use the complex definition that we saw earlier so ladies and gentlemen we are going to plug in this into here and here so have a look and now check this out i times i is negative 1 times this negative 1 so all together it's just going to be positive 1 so i will say this and that cancel out nicely and the truth is we can look at e to this power now and e and ln cancel out right here so that's good but for this right here this and that cancel but i times i is negative 1 but before we cancel the e and ln we will have to put the negative 1 to the power here and then we can cancel the e and also the ln so the truth is right here we get this expression but here we get this raised to the negative one power which is one over that and then all divided by two so let's put that down right here all right so how do we take care of this let's multiply the top and bottom by the common denominator okay check this out i'm going to do this times that and that so i get pi square plus pi and uh, the square root of pi square minus one next we do this times that so we have pi square root of pi square minus one and then this times that the square root cancel so we just get pi square minus one and lastly this times that they all cancel so just get a plus one and then all divided by the denominator right here which is two parentheses pi plus square root of pi square minus one now good news for you guys negative one positive one cancel out but the better good news is that everybody has a pi so we can factor that out so let's go ahead and do that but the truth is you see this is pi square and we have another one so it's two likewise this and that we also have two so we can factor out the two right here and with that being said we will just have the pi left and then this thing left inside and do you guys see it hopefully because you see that bottom right here is two parentheses pi plus square root of pi square minus one and now ladies and gentlemen this is the best part of the night this and that cancel and this and that cancel <laughs> in the end all this we end up with this pi right here so have a look 
cosine of inverse cosine of pi is indeed equal to pi if you're willing to go to the complex world. And this is what you get. So if you like this, I will consider to put this on test for you guys. Let me know. But anyway, for the viewers, hopefully you guys all like this and let me know what you guys think. And uh, of course, if you don't want to go to a complex world, just say this right here has no solution and be done with it. And for pre-calculus, that's totally okay. But if you want to do math for fun, then of course, go to a complex world and explore. Would you like to learn more math in a fun and engaging way? If so, then you should check out the math courses from Brilliant. They are a fun educational website and they have a big focus on interactive learning. Go ahead and check out their pre-calculus course because this course will enhance your understanding of the concepts of exponential functions, logarithms, conic sections, and parametric equations. One thing I really enjoy is that they provide interactive lessons so that you can easily see how the functions changed when the numbers suggested. I really like them because they also believe that the best way to learn is by actually doing it rather than just memorizing facts for exams. You can just go ahead and pick a course that you like and get started. So go ahead and check them out. Use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenredpen, because this way you can get a 20% off discount. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I want to thank you for checking them out.